Welcome back. In this lesson, we're going to be looking at the operation of secondary storage, especially the use of magnetic, optical, and solid state media. Solid state media is also known as flash memory. You should be able to describe how each of these type of devices work and give examples of each. So let's start with secondary storage. Now we looked at primary storage and primary storage is directly accessible by the CPU. It can be volatile or non-volatile. Secondary storage and offline storage include storage devices that are not directly addressable by the CPU. So data from there needs to be loaded into RAM. They are non-volatile devices all the time. So data can be stored as long as required by the user. They allow both read and write access. This type of storage can store more data than primary memory, but data access time is considerably longer than that with RAM or ROM. So they are a lot slower, they last a lot longer, and you can get a huge amount of it. They tend to be a lot more cheaper. However, they're not very fast and they're not directly addressable by the CPU. All the applications, the operating system, device drivers, and any files that you want to use, for example, documents, photo, music, are all stored on secondary storage. And what happens is when you need them, that's loaded into the RAM so they can be processed by the CPU. There are three categories of secondary and offline storage, and they are magnetic, solid state, and optical. So let's start by looking at magnetic type of storage devices. The most common one is the hard disk drive and you need to know the operation of a hard disk drive. These are non-volatile magnetic storage devices capable of remembering huge amounts of data. Removable hard disk drives are essentially hard disk drives external to the computer that can be connected using perhaps one of the USB ports. Removable hard disk drives can be used as a backup device or another way of transferring files between computers. Now for both of them, internal and removable hard disk drives, data is stored in a digital format on a magnetic surface of disks or platters. Now you can see an example on screen. You'll have these round platters and each of these platters will have read and write heads on both sides. Now these platters can spin at about 7000 times per second, so they spin pretty fast. And read-write heads consist of electromagnets that are used to read or write the data to the platters by charging the disk surface with either a positive or a negative charge. This is how a binary 1 or 0 is represented. So there's a lot of movement going on. The disks are spinning, the read and write heads are moving, so hard disk drives tend to be a lot more fragile compared to other types of storage devices. Now these platters can be made from aluminium, glass or ceramic materials. The read-write head is capable of detecting the magnetic charges left on the disk surface and this is how the data is read. In order to do that, the disk surface is divided into concentric circles which are called tracks and sectors which is basically a wedge on that track. Now you can see that example in the bottom right hand corner. So you've got these tracks running all the way around the disk and a sector is just a part of it, like a slice of it. Now dividing the surface in this way provides physical addresses to remember where the data has been saved instead of just running around randomly across each track. A circuit board carefully coordinates the rotating disk and the swinging actuator arm to allow the read and write heads to access any location very quickly. Go to that track, that sector, that type of thing. A typical hard disk drive capacities are measured in gigabytes or terabytes. This is one of the cheapest forms of storage these days. And the reason it's cheap is because hard disk drives have very slow data access when compared to, for example, RAM or even SSD drives. Many applications require the read-write heads to constantly look for correct blocks of data. This means there's a large number of head movements, which means that there's a huge amount of lag in getting data. So the effects of latency or lag become very significant. Now, latency or lag is defined as the time it takes for a specific block of data to rotate around to the read-write head. The more data that's stored on the hard disk drive, the more the more fragmented the data is, the more it's spread across huge amounts of platters and huge amount of tracks and sectors, the greater the lag. Users will sometimes notice the effect of latency when they see messages such as please wait or at worst system not responding. Over time, the hard disk drive will undergo numerous deletions and editing which leads to sectors becoming increasingly fragmented, resulting in very poor performance so the hard disk drive takes longer and longer to access data. Now, of course, you can fix it through the use of defragmentation software. This tidies up the disk sectors and rewrites the data so it's in sequential, contiguous order, so it's right next to each other, so the read and write heads don't need to move a lot, but you will need to actively do that to ensure that you get optimal performance from your hard disk drive. Make sure that you're aware of the benefits of hard disk drives. They are capable of holding vast amounts of data cheaply. They allow sufficiently fast read and write speeds. They're a reliable technology. They're relatively small in size. 
The drawbacks are that due to the nature of moving parts, they will eventually wear out and break. So they tend to be more fragile and less robust than an SSD perhaps. They consume a lot of power compared to an SSD. And of course, some noise is created by the moving parts. Now, despite saying that they are fast read and write speeds compared to an SSD, they might not have fast read and write speeds. Or compared to RAM, they might actually be slower. So just be aware of that, that that benefit of fast read and write speed might be applicable to, say, CDs and DVDs. But compared to faster storage devices, they might be a lot more slower. So what do you really need to know about hard disk drives? You need to be aware of the operational aspects, which means that they use platters which spin really fast, they use read and write heads, they use magnetic charge, they have tracks and sectors, things like that. So each of those in an exam is worth a point. Now that's all we'll talk about for hard disk drives. Let's move on to SSDs. Solid state drives are non-volatile storage devices, so they are secondary storage devices, also capable of holding large amounts of data. And these use NAND or NOR gates. These are also called flash memories, which means millions of transistors wired in series on a circuit board. And this gives them an advantage of having no mechanical moving parts and therefore immediate access to the data. Now, transistors are used as control gates and floating gates, and we'll study about all of these at A-level, but that's all you need to know for now. Solid-state drives perform faster than traditional hard disk drives. However, they are significantly more expensive. This expense means that their capacities are normally measured in gigabytes, even though these days we can get terabyte-based SSDs. There's various examples of SSDs like SD cards, USB memory sticks, all of them use the same technology. Now, SSDs can be installed inside a computer or purchased separately as and removable SSD drive so they can also be used as offline storage and used for transferring data. The benefits of SSDs include extremely fast read and write speeds, they're small in physical size and they're very light so they're very ideal for portable devices, there's no moving parts to wear, fail or get damaged, they're ideal for making portable computers and devices more reliable and durable, they use less power than HDD, which means you can increase battery life, that's why they're very useful for mobile phones and smaller devices, they're very quiet and they generate less heat. Now all of these benefits become the disadvantage more or less of hard disk drives when you compare them. The drawbacks of solid state drives, they're more expensive to buy per GB compared to HDDs. Limited in capacities due to the expense, though that's changing nowadays. And there's often a limited amount of writes that you can do to SSDs before the transistors stop working properly. So the jury's still out on their longevity compared to hard disk drives. Now, so far we've looked at magnetic media, things like hard disk drives that use the principles of magnetism and use electromagnets to store data. We also looked at SSDs, which use the principles of transistors and capacitors to store data. So there are no moving parts. All we're doing here is using electrical current. The final type of media that's used for storage is called optical media. And examples of optical storage devices include CD, compact disc, DVD, digital versatile disc, and Blu-ray discs. Optics means the use of light, so optical media generally uses the principle of light to store data. Binary data is stored as changes to the texture of a disc's surface, sometimes thought of as microscopic pits and bumps, or lands as the syllabus calls them. These bumps are located on a continuous spiral track starting at the center of the disc, just like a hard disk drive platter. While the disc is rotating at constant speed, a laser is pointed at their track, and then you simply burn a pit on the surface. Another laser will reflect or bounce off the disc surface, and depending on whether it lands inside the pit or it's on that bump, light will be reflected differently. And this difference in reflection creates a pattern of light and dark spots which are detected by a sensor. The electronics in the optical drive will then interpret these variations as binary data. The presence of light can correspond to a 1 and the absence or a reduction of light to a 0. Now optical media discs are often made out of polycarbonate plastic which has a coating of aluminium or some type of metal which can be burnt with a laser. Now, typical applications for optical media are as shown. CDs for audio and small amounts of data, DVDs for standard definition movies and data, Blu-ray for high definition video and large amounts of data. And this is due to the storage space that's possible. CDs normally have 700 megabytes, DVD up to 4.7 GB if it's a single layer one, and Blu-ray discs can go all the way up to 128 gigabytes, depending on whether they're single layer or double layer. Now, all three discs roughly have the same size. However, there's a few differences between them which you need to be aware of. A DVD, despite being the same physical size, 
can hold more data than a CD. And to achieve this, it uses a different type of laser beam. The wavelength is a lot smaller than the one that's used in a CD. And both CD and DVDs normally use a red laser. Blu-ray, as the name says, squeezes even more data onto the same size disc because it uses a blue laser. And blue laser has even smaller wavelength compared to red lasers. Now, there are different types of optical media possible as well. There's CD-ROM, DVD-ROM, and Blu-ray-ROM, which means that data is written only once at the point of manufacture here. So if you were a manufacturer and you wanted to distribute video games and you didn't want anybody else to overwrite those video games, you'd use CD-ROMs, DVD-ROMs, or Blu-ray-ROMs. If you wanted to just write once, for example, you wanted to save your own data, you'd probably use a CDR, DVDR, or BDR discs, which are blank discs that can only be burnt once. And then, of course, if you wanted to write them a number of times, you could use CDRW, DVDRW, BDRE, which are rewritable blank discs, which can be written to multiple times. Okay, that's enough about optical media. The final bit we're going to be looking at is the USB flash media. Now, these are exactly the same as SSDs. They are non-volatile solid state storage devices which use NAND gates to store data, which basically means millions of transistors in series. Now USB refers to the USB connection port that allows users to plug the device into a USB port of a computer. Other types of flash storage include memory cards which are used in digital cameras like micro SD and SD. Now, typical applications for flash memory include USB memory sticks, which are used for saving and transferring documents, memory cards and digital cameras to save photographs and videos. And the benefits of flash memory include they're portable, very small and lightweight. You can even get terabytes worth of space on simple micro SD and SD cards these days. So these are quite durable. They have a huge range of capacities available and they have very fast speeds with no moving parts, less heats, all of the benefits of SSD. And the drawbacks are similar. They have a limited but huge number of write cycles possible and they're more expensive compared to HDDs and other forms of media like CD and DVDs. That's all we're going to be looking at for today. You should ensure that you understand the differences between magnetic, optical and solid state storage devices. These are the three distinct types of storage. Magnetic generally uses magnetic media. Examples are hard disk drives and tape drives. You only need to know about hard disk drives for the exam. These are useful for large amounts of data but can be very slow. They're also very cheap. Optical use laser technology to read millions of bumps and pits. And examples are CDs, DVDs, and Blu-rays. They're useful for transfer of data. They're cheap but very limited in capacity compared to the other two. And you also need a special device like a CD, DVD or a Blu-ray reader to read the discs because the discs won't work on their own. Solid state uses solid components that do not move. Examples include SSDs, flash memory like SD cards or USB sticks. They're quick and robust, but they tend to be more expensive and have a limited amount of write cycles. That's all there is for today's lesson. Hopefully you can answer the following questions. What are the three types of secondary storage? You should be able to describe the operation of an HDD. You should also be able to describe the operation of an SSD. You should also be able to describe differences between the three types of secondary storage. And you should also be able to describe the benefits and disadvantages of USB or flash media. In addition to that, I would probably say that be aware of how optical media works as well. The use of lasers, the different wavelengths, which has more, which has less, all of those kind of things. That's all for today's lesson. If you do have any questions, please do get back to me. Otherwise, I'll see you in the next one.